other ask we have for you guys is make sure you guys share the show. Uh, either text it to some friends or just share it on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. It's an easy way to like help yeah. us grow and build up capital, and it's free. And you guys don't – it just takes you three seconds. So share the show yeah. also. Last week, we discussed – Two weeks ago. <laughs> Last week was a crazy week. That's right. I was in Florida, was and you in were visiting Abby California. in California. Yes, visiting my sister. So zero show for us last week. Abby's sister had a baby number two, a baby girl. Yeah, a baby boy. Baby boy. <laughs> And, that top and, and he's a massive baby yes. boy. He was almost 11 pounds. He was 10, just, 13. Just shy under 10, 11 pounds. 10, 13. Yeah. We don't understand. We still don't understand He what came happened. out with man hands. Huge. Already. Yes. Yeah. But very, very so, good. Very good boy. So very Annie was baby. in uh, California. And on yep. Tuesday, she was flying home. I flew out to Florida. I'm an owner in uh, 1689cigars.com if you want a cigar. Uh, and we, I flew out to Florida with my son Cash, his first business trip oh, with yeah. us. It was super, super fun. Super special for him. He he had a blast, and there's a lot of late nights and early mornings, plus the time change. Oh, so yeah, it's brutal. Even one, for even adults. one day, he had a hard time staying awake. I think he was asleep in the car every time you. I gave him me. a lot of caffeine. He was almost asleep every <laughs> he was time. Just, yeah, yeah. Zonked yeah, out, sleeping his way through Florida. But what was cool was we got to go see all these cigar factories. We went to this um, cigar mm-hmm. lounge. This uh, cigar lounge, I, I might have told you about it, but it was um, a former church, big brick building. Oh, you didn't tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, it was cool. super. It was really cool. That's cool. And probably knowing that the church was there, I, I think it was better that the cigar lounge had it than the, the previous church. So <laughs> yeah. I wasn't I was that disappointed, um, but very, That's very funny. cool. And um, my son got to kind of tour with us. And so we went from Tampa to Jupiter to Miami, back to Jupiter. Uh, and then up to North Orlando, and then over to this island, um, North of Orlando, and then back to Orlando. So it was yeah, you guys are a lot of driving. all over yeah. the place. Yeah, super. So fun. we hadn't seen anybody. We hadn't seen each other for seven days. No, until Friday, and then we had some guests, some wonderful guests, stay at our house for uh, four or five days. Yes, that and, was so uh, fun. And it was a lot of fun. And now it's basically summer's hitting. So we're yeah. we're summer's excited here. about the weather. Summer's here. And, yeah, and we're. Glad to be with you guys here on the show. So last two weeks ago, that's what that's what got back to my intro here. Two weeks ago, we discussed the top 10 things I wish I knew 20 years ago. And like we said, it was a list that's probably more like 50 yeah. or so. But Yeah, and we got through seven. And so yeah, we got through seven yeah. and we wanted to go through um, some more because we thought that this is kind of a, a fun conversation and a little bit random, but I think kind of a good list to kind of. Uh, that I think would be fun for you guys to kind of think through also and um, uh, and, and hopefully th- some of this list kind of connects to you. So yeah, uh, number one of the next 10. So technically it's number eight. Yeah. Number eight. I'm, <laughs> who's counting? I'm, who's counting? <laughs> it's just what are my notes did when I copied and pasted. And I don't, I don't know how to fix it. Oh man, I forgot to, I should have had last <laughs> <laughs> You don't know how to fix it. I don't want to do anything. <laughs> I have zero real life skills. Here Sorry. We Sorry. We're back. Guys. <laughs> We're back. Um, we had, uh, Oh, Annie was just talking about her technological problems and 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 that was a self fulfilling prophecy prophecy with the camera. I, so I kicked something under here. Yeah, which yes, that is a self. It may or may prophecy. not be your fault. Sometimes this I, just happens. No, so. I mean uh, I I did it. So. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, guys. I did it. That's just okay. Yeah, Thank you for that. hanging with us for yeah. all those who are live streaming. We're back. Uh, hopefully, you can see us and hear us. Yes. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, hanging hanging through some technical issues. So. We're today's show, just for those who have been added to the program since we 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 went live again. <laughs> second um, time. The second time is we're we're kind of piggybacking off last show where we talked about kind of the top ten things we wish you knew twenty years ago. Yeah. And and so now this this the top ten things we wish we knew twenty years ago. And uh, so we're going to kind of extend last program into this program and kind of talk about um, more things. More, it's more than just twenty. It's yeah. more than just ten. It's, it's just an the ongoing list. There's so many things. If you start thinking that way when you've done something for a really long time, yeah. like it's just like an ever growing list. And like like we said last time, these are in no particular order. They're mm-hmm. just stuff. And so, kind of number one of the second list, if you can call it that, even though we went through seven last time, number one of the second list, and and we're kind of. Um, you know, maybe what's the general topic? We're kind of trying to talk about things that have changed in our minds about the health and fitness world. Yeah, or just like truths or realizations that like we've come to, I've come to, um, just over years and years of uh-huh. doing all the fitnessy things and all the healthy things mm-hmm. and working with so many people. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and these are lessons that like I don't know that you can learn 
otherwise. You know, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, mm-hmm. and you know, you, it just I don't know. You always mm-hmm. think like, oh, I wish I could go back in time and have known this, but I don't know how you do that. You know, unless mm-hmm. you get with a mentor who's already done it, and you just get great advice from them. So I guess that's what we're trying to do is just be like, Hey, in hindsight, these are some of the things that I wish I had known like a long time ago and that I had been able to articulate to all my clients. And it just would have been really, really helpful or, you know, just truths that have emerged over the years. Yeah. So, uh, number one of the second list, you, you kind of have, this as an interesting one. Taste buds, buds can change over the time. What, why does that matter to the health and fitness conversation? Yeah. I mean, it's so funny. And it is a kind of a random one to start with. Yeah. But again, no particular order. Yeah. Yeah. Taste buds can change. Um, um, and they do, they can, and they do. Uh-huh. Um, and I just, you know, I think one of the, I think one of the hardest cells when you try to get people to, you know, look at how they're eating and try to convince them like, Hey, um, okay, you're over here eating oh. mostly kind of garbage processed food. And really ideally you want your, your, your mostly your normal foods to be yeah. these sorts of foods over here. One of the reasons that's such a hard sell for some people is just, they're like, well, I don't like that kind of food. I've mm-hmm. not developed a taste for that kind of food. Like, and, and a lot of times yeah. we've talked about this before. It usually stems back to like, um, uh, what the kind of food they were fed as kids and then yeah. the kind of food that they chose to eat in college when they went out on their own. Like yeah. you, you, train your taste buds, right? Like, mm-hmm. and we all kind of know that, you know, like you can yeah. train them really any direction. But I think that one of the biggest deterrents for eating better, eating more nutrient dense, whole food, at least the majority of the time for people is that they're like, well, I don't, I don't know how to cook that. And it doesn't sound good to me. Mm-hmm. I don't like broccoli. I don't like steak. I don't like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they, they like pizza. That's what their taste buds like. Right. So, so the bringing it back to this point is I think one thing that I wish I had um, I, you know, understood better and, and found a way to articulate better because it's a hopeful message right. to people is that actually, you know, um, what I'm suggesting to you is not like a life of misery where you're eating exclusively foods that you genuinely hate forever. Right. right. It, might, right. it might start that yeah. way because yeah. you know, you have to start where you're at. I got a little story about that. Yeah. No, so do I, but like your taste buds can change. You can get to the point where a well-seasoned vegetable and meat tastes really good to you. Yeah. Um, it just takes time, right? Well it takes seasoned. time. Well seasoned. Well yes. Seasoned. And I mean, don't even, there's so None many None of this here. Northwest season stuff so, where they don't see yeah, hardly anything. I mean, there's so many things that play in. Go to Texas, get some real seasoning. Get, or yeah. And, or like just even just good quality salt. People, <laughs> yeah. I mean, for reals, people just don't salt their food. And yeah. it's just like, no wonder, yeah. no wonder you and your children are like, this tastes really bad. Put salt on your food. But so I, I went to, uh, I went to Florida this last week and when you travel, it's just almost oh, yeah. impossible to eat. Yeah. Eat, you're, it's hard. Well. It's really it, it's hard. hard. Yeah. And, um, uh, but what was interesting. So I've been kind of on this diet for, or if you want to call it a diet, but I, I've changed my food habits in the last six months, eating more protein, and hardly eating out. I used to eat out almost every day because yeah. my work, I could, you know, I'd be working. I could just go get it or door dash it or whatever, make yeah. it real quick. Yep. Um, and uh, so when I went down to Florida, you know, you basically eat out breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You, you know, you, you're on the, you're road, on the hotel. Yeah. You're in a hotel. It's, it's tough. And, and so, but what was interesting was, is um, I now like experience, you know, uh, we did get, we got a uh, uh, Chick-fil-A. We got mm-hmm. Chick Fil A, and and you have the Chick Fil A. You eat it, and you know, and and you actually, it, I, you know, I don't know. You, you, you taste the addictiveness in it, yeah. In, in a way, you know what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't know like, if I can really describe like there's it. There's something in this yeah. that I didn't used to notice because I yeah. had it all the time, and That's now right. that I haven't been having it, it's like, what is that? Because yeah. I I eat, I'll eat chicken at home yeah. with my you know seasoning yeah. and all that stuff, or I'll eat a steak at home with yeah. my you know. But w- when I went to Chick Fil A, I was like, oh wow no wonder your body wants to eat this. And then four hours later, your body wants to eat this all oh, over one again. Hour, right. One hour later. Yeah. yeah right. One hour later. It's yeah. just a very interesting experience given kind that, of my, yeah. my yeah. food changes over the last six months and everything. So, yeah. it, you know, t- I mean, I don't know how that exactly applies to the taste bud thing. Yeah, um, I think it's a perfect example. I mean, yeah. you know, like it's like anything, um, a change is hard at the start because mm-hmm. you're going from doing one thing to slowly doing another thing, but yeah. you can learn to like foods that are good for you. Yeah. Like you really yeah. can. And yeah. like for a lot, just using the, um, the, um, the example of people, uh, women, eh, men too, but women, man, needing everything to be sweet. That's, <laughs> that's a big problem right now. Our 14 year old daughter 
this week has been going through a massive sweet craving. Liv, Liv is, you know, yeah, that's, I think that's, I think that's more of a hormonal thing actually. It's and possible. We can, yeah, we yeah. Can possibly do. I'm going to do some experimenting with her yeah. poor oldest daughter slash guinea pig. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to play around with some stuff and see if it helps her because she is yeah. craving sugar a lot. Last I think night she came to us like four different ways of trying She's to like, get at sugar. I want sugar. Can yeah. I? <laughs> well, it's funny because she used She's to, like scratching her. She used to <laughs> not have a taste for sugar at all. So yeah, no, I think no, it's hundred percent a hormonal thing. So I need to, I'm going to work through that. You guys pick. Interesting. That, Interesting. Yeah, pin okay. that. I'm going to try some things. But it, but for whatever, for many different reasons, a lot of women are like, I, I need everything sweet. Their coffee mm -hmm. has to be sweet. Their yeah. Greek yogurt has to be sweet. Everything uh -huh. has to be so sweet. And yeah. then when you suggest like, okay, listen, Greek yogurt is really good for you. Yeah. It's a great source of protein. It's a great source of dairy. But like, mm -hmm. listen, you're killing me. You're killing you with how much sugar Sweetness you need to have in yep. it all the time, you know? Yep. So, and, but then they're like, well, I can't, I, you know, if I taste Greek yogurt without sugar and it tastes so bad to me, yeah. but you can titrate, you know, yeah. and that's actually Ti titrate. Yeah. I What's mean, that? that just means make very, very that's small. That's number four. So this is, we're going to skip to number four real quick. No, let's, no, no, let's not. We're, oh, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. I just used a word, but that was a great transition. Let's, we can do it next. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you can make small adjustments <laughs> and, and basically, bring those taste buds on board. Yeah, like right. when I, I remember when I was in college and I was coming out of high school where when you drank coffee, it was like a, I it mean, was a, a sugary. Mocha, I remember you would, you would drink some sugary oh, drinks yeah, really. in mean, college. Yeah. Cause like you, I think it's just like in high school, you're like, well, coffee's cool, but I actually hate the taste of coffee and I love sugar. So I'm yeah. just going to do like a peppermint mocha every day or whatever yeah. it was I was having. Uh -huh. So I got into Pumpkin college. Pumpkin spice. Well, well, seasonally. Yes. But now, if, I mean, now if yeah. I'd had that, I would just like, it would be so yeah. disgusting to me. Yeah. But I got into college and I was like, okay, I'm drinking coffee every day, sometimes multiple times a day. This is a ton of sugar. Yeah. I got to wean myself off of the sugar because there's yeah. really, I didn't, uh, there's no issue with coffee yeah. for most people. It's all that sugar that goes in it. And, and But I remember being like, I hate the taste of like right. plain coffee. So I just, over the course of several months, did exactly what we were just talking about. I It was like three pumps of caramel or whatever it was I had in there. I can't yep. remember. And then I would mm -hmm. be like, okay, I'll just go down to two. And I sat there for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I went down to one, one and I sat yeah. there for a while. And I remember very distinctly at some point in that journey, when I got down to a half a pump of whatever the flavor was. Yeah. And I was like, I can't believe I'm here. Yeah. And I actually enjoyed the, I was still enjoying my coffee. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I finally just was like, I don't need it. Yeah. And that was the goal. And so I've been in Americano and cream. now you and just cream. do, you just do yeah. coffee and a little heavy cream. I've done Americano cream. and cream yeah. since that point, And that's yeah. still my drink. And if yeah. I was to go and have that drink now, with the three pumps of whatever. You probably have a headache after. I would or be like, yeah, yeah, not only yeah, yeah, not only would I probably feel sick and maybe yeah. get a migraine, uh, but I would be like, it would taste so sweet to me, mm -hmm. and I would legit think it was disgusting. Yeah. So that's just a small example of how your taste buds can be brought along. And so when we suggest you, and I think it was the last point, number seven, two weeks ago on our last okay. list was, um, it's not weird or it shouldn't be seen as weird or fringe to suggest that we all mostly eat real nutrient dense food. Um, that suggestion shouldn't be seen as like a death sentence for having mm -hmm. to eat food that you find disgusting for the rest of your life because you you really can train taste buds. And it's really important that we remember this for our children yep. and um, that no matter where you are, um, you can, you can pause what you're doing with them and you can have a, you know, a trajectory change and uh -huh. just slowly start and, you know, help them adjust their taste buds. And yeah. if you're ahead of the game and you have like a toddler start now yeah. so that, you know, cause like live, for example, my 14 year old, all the only coffee I ever let her have was an Americano and cream. So she didn't know any different she and, never she, had any sugar. and yeah. she loves it. It actually tastes good yeah. to her. And it's so much easier to do that than it is to do yeah. what I did. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like reverse out of it, wean yeah. yourself off, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah, just taste. And I still can change. like a caramel frappuccino every once in a oh, while, man. but actually I can't do it. It yeah. just tastes, still, it actually tastes bad to me. Every once in a while when I really want to just like chug some, a four shot quad shot coffee, I'll get the, Caramel frappuccino thingy. Oh my gosh! And just down it. Just so but, on a hot I mean, day. I don't like it during the winter. On a hot day, yeah, something you like, like that. You like you like a cold yeah treat. A cold that's sweet treat. Really but, good for your diabetic genes. Oh, it's, it's just, just every once in a while. I haven't done that in probably a year since last summer. Probably, yeah. but you know. Yeah. All right. So number number two, oh, baking. I love, I love this one. Isn't the only way to show love to your family. <laughs> This is a how, this is a tough one from the from the mothers. How many people can you trigger at once? Hashtag one trad wife statement. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. But I I okay. 
this, I, I think this is a big one, but I want to qualify it because I have no idea who we're talking to. There's a mm-hmm. lot of different kinds of people out there yeah, and a lot of different kinds of moms. There's some moms, moms that need to bake more and yes. there's probably most moms that need to bake a little less. Yes, there are some moms that I think need yeah. to bake more. And I actually would put myself yeah. in that category. I, I really do. Um, my biggest issue is time. Um, and I am eternally working on um, carving out more time and on the work side of things, like trying to be more efficient, trying to whatever. That's partly why I'm doing this website, even yeah. though it's yeah. more work right more now, efficient. but like yep. to streamline things so that I have more time because I really, I think I've dropped the ball a little bit with my own children, my own girls in particular. Like I don't, confession time? I would love them to, well, a little bit about baking. Like I think <laughs> I, I would really like to have like um, the, I would like us to be making our own sourdough. Yeah, and we, yeah. I just haven't, oh, I don't have time. <laughs> and uh-huh. so I want, I want that, you know yeah. what I mean? So like, I think, I think baking is awesome. And I think if, uh, and also just from a health perspective. Well, it's a great way to like also just grow your kids and have fun with your oh, kids. Totally. Kids, you kids make love to bake. I mean, they it's love really fun. to. I, I even ca- our son loves it. Yeah. Everybody loves it. Yeah. It's yeah. really fun. And we don't do it a, mm-hmm. a, a, enough probably. And yeah. I mean, from a, just a health standpoint, um, and I'll just use bread as an example, bread that you can make from home is going to be way better for you than, yeah. than buying wonder bread off the shelf. That's, so that, that's been on the shelf for six months or, oh, and or like, whatever. Will never mold <laughs> yeah, ever. And yeah. just don't ask why. Yeah. So, I mean, so yeah. So I just want to qualify that there's, I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying that baking is bad and that yeah. every single person needs to stop baking or mm-hmm. anything like that. And I actually would like to have more time to bake and I would love, yeah. uh, and, I, and then my goal is to get to a place where I can actually be home long enough for chunks of time where I can actually do that. Yeah. But the reason I, I picked this um, this statement is because there is a very large, as far as I can tell, subset of women out there. Um, they tend to be moms, I guess. Yeah, they tend to be moms who have this like compulsion and need to m- create baked goods on almost a daily basis, yeah. um, sort of. Because they sort of, I, I don't even know, I don't even know what to say at the end of that sentence because I haven't been able to get to the bottom of like, okay, why are you doing it? Especially yeah. if you know you're unhealthy, you're not feeling good, your kids aren't feeling good, you know your, some your changes. Your kids are overweight. Well, because we're, of we're it, seeing you know, that, like, right? We're seeing that, but it's like you will not stop making muffins. Like you will not. Like they're just like it's like this weird thing. And I, I, we've talked about this on shows before. I think some of it's like a mom guilt thing. Like uh, this is something I can control. This is something I can do, and it makes me feel better. It uh-huh. makes me feel like a good mom. So I'm just going to compulsively constantly make banana bread and every single time mm-hmm. my kids come home there will be a chocolate chip cookie or three that I put in their hands and that is a thing I love to do so I just that's the women I'm talking to maybe some of you dudes are out there doing that too I think it's usually the ladies I mean always. usually I you know I, I that's my guess but mm-hmm. I just I want you and and I've and I've talked to these women um, and there's a lot of them in, in this community that we live in where when I talk to them and they're like, well, I'm overweight, I'm pre-diabetic, I don't feel good. Um, uh, my husband's not doing his health isn't he's overweight too. his health isn't great because, you know, we, you do the baking, but, you know, you know, he's going to eat it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. You know, mm-hmm. it's like it's very rare when they're just like, well, I won't have that. Um, but and then you're like, OK, well, looking at their food logs, OK, you're eating, you know, uh carby sweet baked things multiple times every single day um you maybe we should do less of that you know and and a lot of times their answer is like oh i i can't like i uh, this is who i am yeah this is what all my friends do this is who we are it's almost like it's an identity yeah and i don't really know how else to say it it's kind of strange it's not you know it's like well just you 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 clearly need to do less so uh, all this to say if you're thriving your blood work looks good. Your energy is great. Your family is thriving and you do some amount of baking and you love it and it blesses your family. Then I don't really see a problem with that. Yeah, I yeah. really don't. But yeah. if you were like, okay, I'm overweight. My yeah. husband's overweight. None of us are feeling My great. Kids are we overweight. need to make some changes here. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you can show love to your family, your husband, your children in many different ways. It does not just have to be a yeah. delicious baked good. Yeah, in yeah. fact, sometimes I think just throwing treats at your kids. And again, please don't like I'm not yeah. don't read into what I'm saying more than treats what I'm actually saying. are not inherently sinful. Well, of course not. But they're easy. <laughs> yeah, it's an mm-hmm. easy way to make your kids happy and yeah. to give them a little dopamine hit. Yeah. And it, it's actually sometimes I think it's an easy way out. Not always, but it can be just like I just want you to be happy and that because that makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. And here's a cookie as opposed to like sitting down and talking to them, 
going on a walk with them, b- uh, bumping the volleyball around with your kid. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, like other things that are actually a little more, they take a little, they're more intentional. They yeah. take more effort. They take more time. They take you pausing what you might want to be doing at that point, pausing it and then going and doing this other yep. thing. Uh-huh. Hey, like let's play Uno. Let's, you know, there's a billion things you can do yep. to show that you love and you care about your kids. Um, some of them are just, a little more time intensive and yeah. it's honestly easier to be like, Hey, I got you guys donuts. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's something to think about. And I in no way do I mean to, to guilt trip anybody, but I do think there are a lot of moms out there, whether you're cognizant of it or not, you literally are like, this is how I love my family. But the thing is, if you're all pre-diabetic, it's actually not mm-hmm. how you love your family. Yeah. It's just not, I mean, that's, that's a fact, you know, and we live in a world right now. Um, and I don't want to conflate two things to, in, in an inappropriate way, but we live in a world right now where a lot of things are categorized as love that are not love. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So you do need to take a step back and look at, okay, what is the state of, you know, myself, my husband, my kids, um, how much of this baking am I doing? Yeah. How addicted to this stuff are we? How yeah. much of our identity is it? And me continuing to pull these things out of the oven every single day, right. is that actually loving my family the way they yeah. need it right now? Yeah. Well, uh, I, I mean, Obviously, you don't also need a default to just like baking bread or cookies with your kids. You can teach them how to make granola bars or there's a there's other fun right. things that you could do in the a kitchen. Much healthier choice. That's where, good. <laughs> you know, my favorite know is mean. homemade ice cream. Yeah, that's way better. You were, <laughs> it is, according to that podcast that we, oh. that you remember? What, was it, what, did, what, did well, what, what was it about? Was it, was it saying that she said, about yogurt was worse than ice cream? Ice cream, something uh, yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, All but of those things but the point the is, the point is, is like, you, you know, cooking, you cooking in the kitchen with the kids is, is fantastic. I, I like, um, I'm starting to involve cash in like barbecue. And when yeah, I cook, when I do a really good example, like yeah. big smoking, yes. when I smoke for three hours or yes. four hours, um, I want to involve cash. Things, and, you can pickle yeah. things like you can, there's healthier mm-hmm. things that you could do. That's a really good point. If you yeah. still want to be in the kitchen and, yeah. of course, we, we and all you, you want to teach your kids a variety of things, you know, a variety of ways of cooking and all that stuff. So don't just default to cookies or bread, you know, constantly. And, and again, yeah. this is another throwback to, I think at, at some point, what we was part of our conversation last time we did this, um, is that these are feast foods uh-huh. in, in my opinion. Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. we need to, I, feasting is very important, yeah. but this is probably not the kind of thing you should be eating every single day. Right. Right. Like yeah. most people, it will not serve your body from a health perspective to yeah. be feasting on these kinds of food every single day. Now, granted right. there's exceptions. I mean, if you're like, uh, doing manual labor 12 hours a day, you might be able to get, away, get away with that. With it, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like, or, or you're like one of those people that just is like a hard gainer. You all, everybody knows like without one or those two friends. That it's just, very unfair. Are, are, we all kind of yeah. hate them, you know, <laughs> but are just so lean and they can't, but I mean, yeah. even then just because someone is not overweight or gaining weight, that doesn't mean that a constant uh, flow of refined flour and sugar is good for their health yeah. either. Yeah, right. But you know, for the most part, these are like feasty foods. So they should kind of be considered a treat and, uh, and it makes them more special when you're not having them all the time. Right. So anyways, okay. Anyways, we did number that. three. I need, I need, I need a, a drum set. Do you want to do the, did you, did you want to do the titration one or does do you care? We can go out. It doesn't matter. No, we're already at order. We are, we're, we're going the order that, that you presented here. Yeah, that's fine. So look at protocols like keto or carnivore or fasting or whatever as tools in your tool belt rather than a permanent lifestyle. Um, Long term, our bodies thrive on diversity and balance, mm. which has been my thesis from jump. Well, yes, that's true. Oh, you hear that? Your, I made a shot. Was that your shot? Was that, that was a swish? Swish. Yeah. swish. Yeah, your um, your theory about all food is lawful and good is good, but your diet is still kind of bad. Uh, I like my theology more than my actual. <laughs> you can always pull the Bible performance. card. <laughs> Jesus always wins. It's not um, what you do; it's what you believe. Uh, this, I mean, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's, you know. a, that's hypocrisy. That's yeah, it yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, okay, so I I um, like this one because this is something that I've um, had. To, this is something I've changed my mind on uh-huh. over the years. Yeah. Where I, you know, years ago I would have, um, and I did. I mean, at least in some in some points in my life, um, think of myself as like kind of keto or low, not keto, co- low carb for life. Uh-huh. Like this is a lifestyle. This is what I do. Um, yeah. and, and I would still carb up sometimes because I had to like, yeah. 
I, and I just instinctively because your body knew was that. like, hey, you actually need carbs. Yeah, when my body craved it, I would yeah. have it, and then also I would still like if I went and ran like you know like a Spokane to Sandpoint or a Hood to yeah. Coast, which is like a 24 hour running relay. It's uh-huh. like no, I'm sorry, I'm eating gummy bear. Like you have yeah. to, <laughs> like, yeah. unless you're like a total like fat adapted running athlete, which there there are some of those. But I I, uh-huh. I, I was like I need carbs for some of these things. So yeah. even then, I would carb up sometimes. But I very much thought of myself as like this is just sort of. My baseline, mm-hmm. like I am a low carb person and I looked at it as like a lifestyle. And the longer I did it, the longer I've seen other people do it, the more mm-hmm. research I've read, um, the more I've learned as time goes on. I've really, I've really changed my mindset to where I don't really think it is advisable for anyone. There might be exceptions, mm-hmm. you know, like somebody with, uh, I don't know, somebody with diabetes, maybe or somebody, you know, with, you know, genetic, uh, predispositions, maybe somebody with uh, like a severe migraine disorder. I mean, there might be exceptions where when you weigh the pros and the cons of doing something like this really long term, yep. the pros actually outweigh the cons. Yep. Very possible. Or uh, like a like a seizure disorder. maybe. Yeah. But for that aside, for like your average person, um, I really think it is actually way more beneficial to look at these things, um, these like protocols, I would almost call them. Okay. Like being ketogenic, um, doing a lot of fasting, uh, being carnivore. And I always use those as examples because they're just really in right now. Yeah. More like... Uh, uh, like tools in your tool belt, like mm-hmm. that here you go through life and you're like, Oh, okay. I think this situation, I think some time during in keto for a day or a week or a month or whatever mm-hmm. um, would be really helpful. So you pull that tool out, you use it for a while, but then you go back to balance. Yep. Right. And then, you yep. know, here you are, you're going and you're like, oh, okay, um, I'm, I'm having some gut issues. I'm going to try doing some fasting to see if that right. helps it, you know, and oftentimes it does not always, but sometimes it does. So yeah. you use that, you pull that tool out for that particular reason for a while. Right. Yeah. And then you go back to balance. That's how I think they need to be used. Yeah. And I've just stumbled to that conclusion. Um, again, some of it's looking at research, some of it's listening to experts, but a lot of it is just by like my own trial and error right. with myself and with other people where, you know, it's, they're better used more short term and mm-hmm. kind of surgically, yeah. but, but long term, it really does seem to me that the body, um, and that's everything. Uh, that's our microbiome. That's our metabolism. That's our brain. Every p- aspect of our body does need long-term yeah. balance yeah. In, in some regard. And you can mm-hmm. have, and we've talked about this on previous episodes, you can have seasons of imbalance um, yeah. uh, where you're eating only meat or you're doing this other thing. But where don't do carnivore are, for 10 years. That's kind of what I'm saying. And again, <laughs> yeah. even there, there's probably going to be some exceptions where yeah. there are, are a few people out there who are able to, or, you know, able to do or, something or like that. Or have long-term. to, because maybe there's some yeah, sort of. Maybe it's a have to where yeah, the pros right. outweigh the cons, or yeah. maybe it's a, they just choose to and they're doing okay. Although I still wonder sometimes because with things like that, like aggressively fasting for years, right? you know, like aggressively, uh-huh. I, don't, I don't mean dabbling. I mean like yeah. a lot or like being ketogenic for like years. Um, sometimes you see those, you hear from those people and they're like, well, I've been doing this for 10 years and I'm doing pretty good. But how much of that is just a testament to what the human body can survive? You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And again, I'm not trying let's to like, see your blood work. And I'm not yeah. trying to like tell someone that, no, that's not true. You're not yeah. doing well. I'm like, let, yeah, I mean, yeah, let's see mm-hmm. your blood work. But even if their blood work is like, okay, I mean, how much there's a difference between surviving. It's a different conversation between surviving and like optimal and right. like thriving. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Right, and I think right. sometimes yeah. we conflate those things because the human body uh-huh. is designed by God to, to, to survive to almost survive. anything. Yeah, right. right. So it's right. like, yeah, mm-hmm. you can eat nothing but meat and eggs for 10 years and mm-hmm. survive. Mm-hmm. Um, would it be better though? If you are also eating all these other plant type foods right. that God's given us, because theoretically the, you know, the plant foods kind of offset the toxicities of all right. the, the meat and the animal products. And then the mm-hmm. benefits of the meat animal products kind of offset the toxicities of the plant. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then if you're eating more things, you're not getting as much of any one right. again, balance yeah. because that you can, you can end up with issues with yeah. too much of anything, mm-hmm. uh, truly too much of anything, too much water, too much anything. Yeah. You can end up with issues. So I don't know. I think that's an interesting part of the conversation too, where people yeah. are like, well, I've done it. And it's like, well, people have done a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like you well, can this, survive on 500 calories a day. Yeah. Does that mean that's optimal? Right. Uh, no, you know, probably well, and, it's, and, and God like built the way, uh, built the world in a way where there's like all this diversity of food. Yes. I mean, you have, this is a big part we get to eat little trees, broccoli, you always little, thought there was little trees. I call them little arbles. <laughs> Piquito arbol. That's he my does, Spanish. He does call them that, actually. That's my Spanish. It's just weird. Piquito arbles. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and balls of vitamin C, oranges. oranges you know, this, yeah, yeah. So um, many different um, kinds of foods. Grapes that turn into wine, um, you know, uh, and all the meats that God's given us through the food that we get to eat. Um, and and so it, it's, it strikes me that 
you know, one of the things we want to encourage Christians and how to think about food, and we've said this before on the shows, you know, don't have some sort of guilty relationship with food, like be free or like, like uh, guilty, but also like restrictive, restrictive. Like, I can't yeah. have this. I can't have this. I can't yeah. have this. Sometimes you have to for a little while. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes you're born. Mm-hmm. Like I got a sister who's allergic to like everything. Uh, yeah. A lot of uh-huh. things. And yeah. um, actually this will be, this is a really good conversation going to, to number, number four. four, which is titration. And I mean, like there are certain foods that just this side of eternity, she's just probably never yeah. going to want to eat. Cause it makes her so sick. But you know? And also but, you see her, she's joyful. I mean, that's like, yeah. She understands that that's the case. And, you know, we're also in a fallen world, which is where that comes from, where Abby um, has, you know, inability to eat certain foods. Yeah. That's just indi- indicative of a fallen world. Yes, for sure. But it's not ideal. If, yeah. if, if she responded in a way that was frustrating, in a way that was, you know, um, at odds with food, it would, she, she wouldn't, you, you know, it, her attitude matters in this. Well, she's doing great and, with it, but my point, she's doing fantastic. My, my point was that that's not by choice. Like her, yeah. she literally just can't have those foods, but a lot of but people, what we're talking about though is, is like viewing food in a way where you don't have like a guilty relationship yeah. with it, whether, whether you have allergies or not, like look at all the yeah. food that God has given us. And, um, is it in Romans where it says, you know, whatever, whatever, um, uh, you know, receive all food with Thanksgiving. Yeah, and yeah, that's true. And that yeah. changes, I think, a lot of it. Also, for me, that kind of helps me adjust my diet, like adjust not not going out to eat all the time, and moving over here to kind of eating more. Um, you use the the phraseology I like is nutrient dense food. Yes, yes. And and so being able to kind of have an attitudinal adjustment and look at food is not kind of like this frustrating thing. Uh, it actually helps me kind of have a better mindset to be able to, you know, change my food diet and do it with a little more Thanksgiving, a little more like frustration. Well, and I mean, especially guys, like I'm guys love to eat. We love bread. You know, I love bread. I love a good burger with bread on it. Um, you know, I love a good beer with it, all that stuff. But w- once we kind of started adjusting my diet for, for a little bit, it's just kind of frustrating because like, I love good food. I want good food. But then, you know, number one, knowing that my taste buds can change over time mm-hmm. be able to adapt to better food. Mm-hmm. And, they and have to. They have to. Yeah. But also, doing it for a season is very reasonable. It's 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 realistic for me. Yeah. You know, I'm, I've been doing six months, and then I, you know, went um, on the road trip to Florida this last week and had a Chick Fil A sandwich, and I was like, oh man, you can actually better yeah. understand what's going on in the food and the environment out there. Yeah. And and the whole the whole point is like like what I'm what I'm this last minute I'm trying to get at is, you know, think about food in such a way where it's all a gift from God and and think about it in such a way where you're not guilty and you're you're intaking it in such a way where you are giving thanks for what you're able to eat and what you're not able to eat at the same time like in our in our sister-in-law's yeah. case, my sister-in-law's case and everything. So Yeah. All that say number 4 titration is key did i say that right titration titration is key yeah titration that sounds like um some sort of injection it's not it just means titration just means like titrating your dose means like slowly 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 breathing incrementally yeah like very slow though okay and um, I, I left it kind of open-ended, like kind of vague yeah. because I, um, you know, again, almost 20 years in looking back, um, one of the, one of my biggest takeaways is that in almost every aspect of life, one of the things that will ensure, or at least um, make success more probable uh, diet, exercise, anything really yeah. is starting very small. And it's, it's funny, uh, you know, like if you take the whole, like, um, New Year's resolution concept where, oh. and we've talked about this before, I think where it's like, people are like, that's it. I've been doing nothing. I'm sedentary. I'm a couch potato. I'm going to work out four days a week. Now. I, I'm going to work out every oh. single day for an hour. And I'm going to just, and I mean, it's just like, they go from zero to, to a hundred, yeah. or at least that's their goal. And they, you know, they burn out, they give up, it's, mm-hmm. uh, they get injured, you know, whatever combination of things. It, it never works. Almost mm-hmm. never. I mean, of course there's always exceptions, but like barely ever. Um, it really is important to like make small changes. Mm -hmm. Your body is going to handle that better. If you're trying to get your body to adapt to anything, it's got to be this very slow, gradual push, right? That's how adaptation happens normally. And I think I just, it's so funny how it's so lost on people to just, it's like, start slow. Like, don't even go to the gym yet. Like start with like walking 20 minutes a day. Right. You need that to form the habit. You need that to just 
start moving. You need that to get your muscles to slowly start waking up. Right. And then maybe you just, after that, you tack on like 10 air squats on the off days, right. 10 air squats, 10 push ups. do that for a while. Right. You're probably going to be sore. That's yeah. probably uh, even that it sounds like nothing, but like you'll be sore. Mm -hmm. Then eventually if it's going well, you've got the habits in place, you make it to the gym, you start loading these things up. Like mm -hmm. you really, people have way more success right. for every reason under the sun with titration. And I'll say with food, um, and this kind of piggybacks on what we were talking about before about how, like it's from a biblical perspective, it really does seem, um, that God in his word has given us so such a variety of different kinds mm -hmm. of food to eat. Um, nothing's, you know, now it, here, here we are in the new covenant. Keep the arbles. There's nothing off limits, yeah. even the tiny little broccoli trees, you like all this meat, uh, yeah. animal products, plants, everything. Um, it seems like the idea, biblically speaking, is that it's all lawful and mm -hmm. we should be enjoying it. You know, I mean, at least as much of it as we can. And like we said in our last point, um, diversity and balance is really um, from a physiological standpoint and more of like a health standpoint. That is what, where our bodies long term or kind of over the broader scheme of things. That's what causes your body to thrive. I mean, mm -hmm. even, even down to the diversity of your gut microbiome. Um, that's what most gut experts will say, at least right now is like, mm -hmm. you want diversity. And the way you get that is you eat as many different types of fermentable fibers, plant foods, phenols as you can. You run into trouble when you eat a lot of the same stuff over and over again, mm -hmm. or for a really extended, uh, extended amount of time, completely cut out food groups, especially right. those sorts of foods like the fibers and the phenols that feed your microbiome, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why so many people who do way too much fasting or way too much carnivore or whatever end up with gut issues way down the line. But all that to say is that that's that should be our goal. And granted, like mm -hmm. we said, there are going to be some people out there like my sister who's like, I, I probably will never be able to eat peanuts. Like, it's just not, it's not on the cards for me right. or I will vomit every single time. Like, I just, I'm not going to be having a good time. I'm not going to have those. That's perfectly fine. But with a lot of food, I would say sensitivities, or just foods that some people, maybe they haven't even seen a doctor or got a test done or anything. They just know they don't do well right. with it. Like, for example, like uh, cruciferous for a lot of people. They're like, okay, I know. I know it's high in nutrients and I know it's supposed to be good for you and good for your liver. But like every time I eat broccoli, I get super bloated. So mm -hmm. it's bad for me. I don't like it. I don't eat it. But so often what your gut needs is titration. Like Stop mm -hmm. it with the whole bowl of chickpeas. Have one chickpea. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a problem food, but you know that there's a lot, you know, it's a really mm -hmm. awesome, you know, a resistant starch and it would feed my gut microbiome and I know I need that, but like, I just, yeah. I can't handle them. Right. Uh, start with one. And then after a week of that, go to two. Yeah. And then after a week of that, go to three. And it's so funny because this probably people listening are probably like, well, that is so weird. I would never, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's, and that used to be how, um, doctors dealt with even, allergies. even things like yeah. nut allergies. It was just yeah. microscopic doses yep. slowly built up over time. Right. And be, our, your gut will adapt, you right. know, a lot of the times. Now, granted, I'm not saying don't, if you have like a legit allergy and you like go anaphylactic, please don't go do mm -hmm. this. That's not what I'm saying. But there's so many foods and so many people who have so many no foods. Yeah. They're like, I can't have that. I can't mm -hmm. have that. I can't have that. I can't have that. If you titrated, if you picked one, one at a time and started very, very small, you might be surprised what you can end up being yeah. able to tolerate. Right. And then Over again, time. have yeah. so many more foods to enjoy, have so much more diversity in your diet. So I just, titration in everything, um, I think is key. And I think it's something that's very lost on us Americans who are very like, go big or go home, all or nothing. I want it now. Um, yeah. So. Can, can we call that the Princess Bride principle? The Princess Bride? Isn't, you mean the Princess in the Pea? What do you mean? No, the Princess Bride, isn't it um, uh, uh, the lead guy? What's his name? I forget the... Wesley? In Wesley the, in the Princess Bride. Yeah, and he's he's sitting down with a midget, and oh. he's the poison, the poison thing. Oh, the poison scene. And what had happened was, is he had. Oh, just that's how built he did up, it. That's yeah. how he did it. It was he tritated with poison. And immune, he's immunity to IOK okay so powder he, or whatever. He slowly it was called. took yeah. more and more poison, built up over time. That, that, so that's how you do it. Yeah. So we call that the Princess Bride. Okay, that was a you, principle. Oh, you took that me was, there. I got it eventually. Yes, that was so good. All right, number five. Really five. Um, Neil, Neil got that one from the jump, didn't you, man? Neil got it right away. Yeah. I'm like, He's like, what? oh, yeah, the, the poison we call thing. The poison princess bride. Um, you don't need an hour to work out or a gym. 100%. Oh, my gosh. 100%. I know. This one hurts me. And this is another one that I've changed my tune on. Yeah. Um, over the years, I have um, over the. Okay. And, and I, I let me defend myself. So I've worked as a trainer for years in a gym. And I will say that over the years, the number of clients that I had 
who, when they would say, I'll do this workout at home, yeah. that would actually do it. <laughs> Yeah, I could Few and probably far between. count Few and far on between. one hand. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's very hard in yeah. a way for a lot of people to work out at home. There's mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. You have no accountability. You're not paying for a membership. There's no one else there being like, hey, let's go or like whatever. Yeah. Like, like, And there's so many other things to do. There's so many distractions. Maybe your kids are there. So working out at home for a lot of people is really, really hard, which is one of the reasons that so many people have a gym membership, yeah. right? So I've always been like, come on guys, just do the gym membership. And I simply said that because a, there's more equipment. Usually a lot of times women at home would either have like no equipment or they'd have like five pound, yeah. you know, which yeah. it's like, okay, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna do anything. You're, with the yeah. Pound. You're like, gonna outgrow yeah. that really fast. Right. You go to the gym, you got everything. You got your barbells, yeah. you got your dumbbells, you know, so some of it is an equipment thing and just the, and people and, use what they pay for. That's the other thing. And, and, right? I mean, there's just so many mo re reasons why yeah. a gym membership is ideal. And I still think that. So I would say best case scenario, unless you are highly motivated and have like a pretty well outfitted garage gym, which yeah. I would say this side of COVID, more people do. Yeah. There's more oh, yeah. people than ever with like full on rogue. It was hard to get weight equipment oh, during yeah. COVID. Oh, it was like a black market. You, could, yeah. you couldn't get dumbbells. You couldn't uh -huh. get anything. But a lot of people did throw down thousands of dollars yeah. by like a good uh, set of dumbbells. Yep. You know, they pull up bars, squat racks, you know. Well, there's that an extra self-discipline too, to be able to work out at home. Oh, that totally. You, you know. Oh, a lot of people don't have it. Yeah, a lot of people yeah, don't have it. And I'm yeah. being, I'm just going to be really straight up about that. Yeah. And there's certain personalities I've noticed that tend to be more intrinsically motivated mm -hmm. as opposed to just extrinsically motivated. Yeah. Like, well, other people will see me or I told my friend I would go. That's like extrinsic motivation, but mm -hmm. it's more rare to find someone who's like, I'm going to do this because I want to do this. Right. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Yep. But so, so all that to say, um, I've had to. Uh, those have been my struggles and the, and those have been all the the reasons why up to this point or very recently, I've just been like the gym is better. And I would still say, I think it's optimal. And uh, again, like I was just saying, unless you are outfitted very well at home, very well um, with dumbbells, barbells, squat rack, pull up, you know, all the things that you might need to do. And yeah. you're motivated enough that, and, and knowledgeable enough um, to actually do um, impactful workouts. Yeah. And there are some of those people out there. Okay. But this is the reason this is the reason my point is still you don't need an hour to work out or a gym is right. that you have to deal in reality. And that's one of the things that I think so many personal trainers and I was one of these mm -hmm. just have not done well and or don't do well. Um, if you are natural, if you are a personal trainer, it means almost always one of two things. You have always been an athlete and you've always been naturally athletic, good at all this stuff, sports, weightlifting, whatever. Yep. And so you're just going with it. That's a lot of us, which means you already like this stuff. Right. You, you've already got the habits in place. You've always done it. And so, and then you go to school for it or you get certified and then you're paid to spend time in the gym right. and paid to be fit. Okay. So right. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that is not Don't normal. base your standard off my yeah, wife. She is, gets paid. It's to, not normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not normal. And I think trainers right. don't realize that. Or the other trainers are the people who had some sort of transformation, mm -hmm. right? Like I was 300 pounds. And then I found CrossFit. It changed my life. And so now I want to share this gift with everyone else and nothing wrong with that right. um, at all. Yep. Uh, but that's usually the other kind of, of person who's who involved in the training a trainer world yeah, or yeah, a health yeah. coach or whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's, uh, it's actually pretty funny how often it's one or the other. Yeah. There's very yeah. other, very yeah. few times is a different path that gets you there. Yeah. But both of those people, both of those types of people need to understand that they're not normal and right. it is not normal to be, to love that sort of thing that much or to be paid to do it. Right. So if you're like, okay, on paper, a gym membership, three to four times a week, full body, spend an hour. Cause you know, if you're doing really thorough weight training, traditionally right. you need at least an hour. That's right. just what it takes. Yep. Right. Um, it, it, you know, those are all things that are really good on paper. And I spent years just being like, come on guys, you know, it's like, you just have to prioritize it. You just have to get up early. You got to yep. make it happen. You got to want it, you know, all the things. But at a certain point, you just have to realize that like, there are all these moms and dads out there and maybe they're not moms or dads, just women, men, whoever, mm -hmm. who, are, who literally like they're living an insanely busy life. Stuff happens. Yeah. Kids happen. Sickness happens. Job happens. Divorce yeah. happens. Yeah. Stuff happens. You yeah. know what I mean? And so for some people, it's like, okay, um, what's better? Me doing something at home or for a very short amount of time that's not an hour right. or doing nothing at all. And that's often the, that's their choice. Mm -hmm. That's what it comes down to. Is it perfect? No. Right. Sometimes do I think they should, you know, maybe like reprioritize, you know, cut some other things out of their day, you know, whatever. Yeah, sometimes. But I mean, I've seen plenty of situations where these people's lives and you're a pretty good example of this. It's a pretty zero sum game. Like yeah. they're just not in a season of life where yeah. they're going to be able to be a gym rat. It's just not happening. Right. And and so right. I what I've all this to say, 
at a certain point in my career, I've had, and I, maybe part of it was me getting older, getting married, having kids, feeling <laughs> feeling the busyness. And uh, you know, but even then, I'm still paid to be fit, so it's still not exactly the same as it is for everybody else. Right. But at a certain point, I just had to be like, okay. Um, yes, the gym is best and this many days a week and this and that and that, but like, let's actually shift the conversation to what is actually doable for regular busy people. And a lot of times that is at home. And sometimes that means doing like what you're doing, like trigger mm -hmm. sessions where it's literally like four trigger sessions a day where you yeah. just drop and do pushups yeah. and then you get up and you move on with your day. Is that, yeah. is that an mm -hmm. optimal fitness plan for like the Brad Pitt body in fight club? No, right. <laughs> but is it? doable and is it better than nothing? Right. Yes. Yes. So I've really had to like step off my gym high horse a little bit and right. just be like, you know what? Um, yes, we can make stuff happen at home. There is yeah. a lot you actually can do at home and you do not need an hour. Yeah. You do not eat an hour. Yeah. And that's another thing, especially coming from a running background. I used to think that way. Like if I don't have an hour, I can't run. Right. If I can't bang out six miles, there's no point. And that is so not true. Right. Like I hop on the treadmill now to do sprints and I'm with warm up, with warm up and cool down. I'm done in 30 minutes. Yeah. Like it's not, you don't need that much time necessarily. Now it's nice to have that much time some of the time, but it's a real, it's a disservice to ourselves to have that kind of like black and white right. thinking like yeah. I don't have an hour. I can't do anything. Right. A lot of things are better than yeah. nothing. Well, and yeah. just for, I'm on the way on the other end of the spectrum than you are. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. And the just opposite doing, of a gym rat. Yeah. Just doing push-ups every day has um, just made me feel a little stronger, a little more functional, a little more coordinated. You know, yeah. it's not, and then also doing air squats. I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't lift weights with my air squats. I'm just doing air squats. Well, when I first started doing that back in November, remember how much I was complaining to oh, you? I was so sore. I was so, so sore. incredibly sore. Yeah. And I just did, I remember, I think I did two sets of 10. I was like, I'm going to stop here right now. This, this is my first time or something. Like I'm just going to stop here. Yeah. And I was like so sore for a week. Um, and I was I mean, complaining to my it, basketball team because I was coaching, um, coaching the girls, the varsity girls. Yeah. And I was complaining to them. I was like, I am so sore. And I've only done like two air squats or whatever, 20 air squats today or something like that. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty funny. Right, that's, now, that's, the now it's not even, that's the titration thing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's right. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Yeah. You're, not, you're not better than air squats. Well, when, I didn't know how start, sore that was going to make me yeah, either. This was, I mean, it, that's yeah. part of what blew my mind. Yeah. And, and then now doing air squats, I mean, it's nothing, you know, it's probably, I, I probably should right, you add, adapt, add yeah. weights or something or, or do one leg step forward. What do you call that? Step forward. Like lunges. Yeah. Lunges. Just yeah, yeah. You just need change to change it. Yeah. Cause yeah. the body adapts really fast. Right. Yeah. But I so, mean, like you are a great example because yeah. you are not a gym rat. You're never going to be, you have no interest. You're way too busy. Any mm -hmm. extra time you have, you're going to spend it with your kids. It's like, just not going to happen mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. And you know, how many times in over the past years have I written a program for you? Like try this one at yeah. the gym, try that one a month, maybe I'm like, I'm like, a, uh, two he, it's a lot of work. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like what the best plan is the plan that you will actually do. And it's never, it's never, and, and also don't on the other, uh, uh, other side of this, if you're someone like me, like, um, I wasn't, I would look at it as like, that's just too much time away from what I need to be doing. Right. And so it wasn't the fact that I, I didn't have the discipline to do an hour long workout. No, yeah, not at all. It was the fact that at my stage in life, I can't do that because I need, it. I probably have another five years working at the pace that I am, which is yeah. pretty intense Yeah. Um, to get everything over the hill. Um, yeah, no, it's not a laziness issue Yeah. and, no. I, and it can be for some people, but like that mm -hmm. episode we did about hardworking dads, like I mm -hmm. think most of those guys are not, that is not their problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, their health is bad, so mm -hmm. something needs to change, but it's not like y'all are lazy. <laughs> yeah. So this, this point, Let's, you don't need an hour. You don't need a gym. That's is, right. is really important. And it's freeing too. It goes back to the freeing and thinking about, yes. it's, uh, you know, free yourself. Don't be guilty. Um, uh, let's do, let's, let's end here. I actually yeah. skipped one on X. I, I, I don't okay. know. We my got, eyes, so my weird. eyes, um, at this time of year, um, it's allergy season for me. So yeah. I'm constantly like, it's really bad. He just uh, looks like he's my, crying. My eyes all the time. just drain. Yeah. Constantly. This Poor time of year. Gabe. So I missed it, but, um, let's end here on this one. Supplements won't save you. Um, Good one this to is, end on. this is with just so much in the health and fitness world where they're constantly looking to this product or this supplement or this shot or whatever right. to like fix your problems, fix right. your health problems. And it's such a short term way of thinking or a quick fix way of thinking. And that's normally sometimes that it happens in this world. You find a yeah. supplement that's like, Oh my goodness, it, it solved my depression and 
um, you know, and all my yeah, like health ga- problems game changer, and game changer, you know, sometimes yeah, that happens, sometimes. but this is not generally how God designed the world. And, and then in addition to that, and I know you got all sorts of thoughts on this, but in addition yeah. to that, you got to remember that the supplement world is heavily incentivized by your dollars mm-hmm. and, and it's A not incentivized by industry. truth and um, transparency and you know, um, you know, honesty behind the supplement. Um, you know, really, in, it, it, it's it's a fifty billion plus dollar industry, um, and and so it's driven by um, more the dollar than truth and honesty, especially in the health and fitness world. Um, and that started with the fad diets in the eighties and nineties. And everything. Um, oh, I think it's been going on longer than that. Sure. I mean, as long as people sure. will buy something that they think snake works, oil, yeah, whatever, I mean, yeah, traveling, yeah. whatever. Yeah, right, right. Medicine doctor people. Yep. I think you know we've been the same for a really long time. So a one more comment, then then you jump on this. Okay. Uh, you know, and I think um, that's why it's really find someone you trust um, yeah. in this world to work with. Don't just find the biggest influencer on Instagram and reach out to them. Um, you know, there's nothing now at the same time, we don't want to fall into the other ditch where it's like, oh, it's capitalism. That's ruining everything. No, uh, we have no problem with people making money off supplements, especially if they're being honest about it and yeah. right about it yeah, and right. equitable about it and everything. So that's um, but just note, mo- this world is driven by so much. Um, uh, la- I would say lack of transparency and 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 just marketing. So, yeah, there you go. just want to make money. Yeah. yeah, I mean, really, I mean, we've done a whole, we did a whole episode at one point on supplements, so you can go to that if you want to um, hear. What did we title that episode, that show? Um, why I Don't Want to Talk About Supplements. Isn't that what we call yeah, it? I yeah, I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Um, the re, the, you know, so you can go back and listen to that if you want to hear all uh-huh. more thoughts that we have on supplements, because there's a lot that goes into it. And you're right, the, there's issues with the industry, there's issue with, you know, quality control, there's uh-huh. issue with honesty, and then is this a supplement I actually need? There's all these things. Uh, but, you know, really the, uh, the big point that I was meaning to make when I wrote this Supplements Won't Save You is that I see so often, and I do understand this human tendency because we all have it. Um, and you saw this come out over COVID a lot mm-hmm. where um, a person will be in poor health, not sleeping well, not eating good food, not taking care of their body, not exercising, like this is not doing all the very obvious big E on the eye chart things mm-hmm. that um, really are, are what we need to be doing and are going to be by far the most impactful things that we can do for our health. They're not doing any of those, but they're like, what pill can I take? Yeah. Like what right. supplement can I take? Right. And, and that's, who I'm talking to here. Yeah. Like there, and I think I said this on our supplement podcast that we did. You really cannot out supplement a poor lifestyle. You really cannot like a, a, poor, a, a poor, a poor, yeah, poor yeah, lifestyle. Yeah. You, you just yeah. can't. And supplements are meant to yeah. be supplemental. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what the word means. Yeah. Um, and, and they uh, work best if you're, Cutting with the grain of yes, kind of more of a healthy the, nutrition. Yeah, dense if, lifestyle. You're, if you're using a good yeah. quality, um, you know, supplement that is actually something that you need, right? And mm-hmm. and oftentimes symptoms, blood work, things like that should be informing that because I think so many people take perfectly fine supplements that they just don't need. Right. Um, those can help you synergistically right. when you're already dialing in all these other things. Right. But if you're just like this, I mean, like, I'm serious. Like if you're not sleeping, if you're just refusing to prioritize sleep, right. your stress is through the roof. You're eating um, inflammatory foods regularly. Yep. You're not um, exercising in any kind of meaningful way. It does not matter what you take. It yep. doesn't. And yep. people just, they try. And I get it. I mean, it's kind of like over COVID where people would be like so unhealthy, so right. metabolically unhealthy, super low vitamin D, zero cardiovascular fitness. And they're just like, I'm just going to put this mask on my face and that's going to save me. Yeah. And like, what did we learn? Yeah. Is that the, like the more metabolically compromised you were, the more likely you were to die yeah. of COVID. Yeah. And like, like that's yeah. the bottom line. It doesn't yeah. matter if you wear a piece of cloth. Yeah. <laughs> I can't right. even, like, yeah. it's just so, so we did just, that. Our yeah, country did that. that. Happened, <laughs> the guys. world did that. Don't forget <laughs> it. But you know, yeah. so it's like, you know, don't just remember, even though it is tempting um, it is a very human, uh, a natural human tendency to look for a quick fix or a band aid mm-hmm. um, when you know you are not where you should be. You're unwell. Yeah. Really, you need to. It always comes back to yeah. moving your body, putting for the most part good nutrient dense food in your body, taking care of your health in a very root cause way. That is how you move the marker for right. health. Right. It is uh, no pill is going to do that for you. That Did was it. fun, baby. That was fun. 
Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you share the show. Yeah. Send it to your your friends. You know, no no intentional like don't send it to your friends because you think they're fat. I mean, <laughs> no, may, I mean, maybe it's a good way to help them. I don't know. I don't know. A, a passive aggressive. Just be careful. Please yeah, don't be listen. passive aggressive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> buddy, listen to this water break show. It's okay. We kind of yeah. we were hard on everyone, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. We we're hard on everyone. Uh, All right. If you guys want to contact us, wrenchmedia at gmail.com. Share the show and download our app, Fight, Laugh, Feast. Type Fight, Laugh, Feast in your app store or cross politic in your app store. That's the best way really to listen to our show and everything else that's on the Fight, Laugh, Feast network. So thank you for tuning in to Water Break. And we'll see yep. you well, next week. We're yes, here. We're here we'll next week. We'll be back week. next week. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>